like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul yearns for you by Lord. Psalm 42, verse 1. Beloved in Christ, your soul is longing for the Lord. My soul is longing for the Lord. Our souls are yearning for the word of God. Our souls need refreshment from the word of God. And that is also often said to us in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 to 11. That for as the rain and the snow comes down from the skies and do not return before having watered the earth. Join me and other priests of the Archdiocese of Tamale from the 1st of June 2019 to listen and watch the living streams of water on our YouTube channel, Devsocon TV Tamale and Facebook channel, Department of Pastoral and Social Communication, Devsocon Tamale. Each day, 12 noon, listen, may God restore, renew, and strengthen your faith in the Catholic Church. One. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Queen of Heaven, rejoice, Alleluia, for whom you, you did marry to bear, Alleluia, has risen, as he said, Alleluia. Pray for us to God, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, Alleluia, for the Lord has risen indeed, Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, you give joy to the world through the resurrection of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, you may bring us to eternal glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved in Christ, you are welcome once again to living streams of water, where the springfall of water nourishes, strengthens, and guides us each day of our life. Beloved in Christ, today I would like to reflect with you on the first reading from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, the verse 17 to 27. In those days, from Miletus, Paul went to Ephesus and called to him the elders of the church. And when they came to him, he said to them, You yourself know how I lived among you all the time from the first day that I set forth in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials which befell me through the plots of the Jews. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance to God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I am going to Jerusalem, bound in the spirit, not knowing what shall befall me there, except that the Holy Spirit testified to me in every city that imprisonment and affliction await me. But I do not account my life of any value nor as precious to myself, if only I may accomplish my cause and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus, to testify to the gospel of grace of God. And now, behold, I know that all of you among whom I have gone about preaching the kingdom will see my face no more. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all of you, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. The word of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today St. Paul makes us 
to understand that vividly he has spoken to you and to me in public. You remember when he went to Athens and met the people who were worshipping many other gods and one inscribed on it to an unknown god. And that is what he says I am coming to tell you about. The people looked at him and told him we will listen to you another time. He also explains to us that he has spoken to us in synagogue where he has visited many other communities from Phrygia to all other places, Pamphylia to other places. He has gone to Ephesus. He has gone to Miletus. And all these places, he had taught them in the synagogue. He also said that he went to visit them individually, house to house visitation. And in doing all this, this becomes the beginning of the new evangelization that you and I will always want to do. Today in our world, we have gone to a different aspect of social media, where People proclaim the word of God on Skype, on uh, YouTube, on Facebook, Twitter, blog, and any other thing that will make the word of God more visible and close to us. And that is what St. Paul is asking us to do in our days. Secondly, he is also saying that wherever that he is going, the Holy Spirit prompts him that there is tribulations, there are difficulties within where he is going. But there is something special. He doesn't lose heart because it is the Spirit of God that is leading him. What about you and what about me? Today in our world, we are not looking for Christianity with suffering. We are not looking at Christianity with difficulties. We are not looking at Christianity with one thing or the other. We are looking at Christianity with enjoyment. But that is not what the Spirit of God asks. Once you come to believe, and in belief you offer your own self as a burnt offering to God, know that tribulations will come your way. Difficulties will come your way. But remember that the Holy Spirit is always there to speak for you to lead you, to guide you, and to direct you. The third thing that he makes us to understand is that none of his disciples in all that he has done can say that he never told them the truth because he revealed God's counsel of grace to them. Today, we have people who stand in the name of God to redirect people's life by saying that the Holy Spirit is telling me to slap you. The Holy Spirit is asking me to step on you. The Holy Spirit is asking me to do something that is not what the Spirit speaks of. Let us know that God knows our heart. He knows how we feel. And he knows that the joy that he plays in every Christian is the joy that of his own salvation. If it doesn't bring sanctification to humanity and glory to God, it will never happen. But because of our own benefits, sometimes we want to move into things that do not help us. Sometimes we move into things that, after all, we come to even realize that it is not good. St. 